Hello everyone. Welcome again to Applied Linguistics 1. Today, we're going to continue our discussion of second language acquisition theories. In this video, we're going to talk about the cognitive theory of second language acquisition. Cognitivism is a theory in psychology that is concerned with the study of mental processes. Its main objective is to explain how humans think, understand, and learn. It also aims at identifying how such processes of thinking, understanding, and learning develop through human life. This is called cognitive development. In this regard, learning, and more specifically language learning, is an internal process that is part of cognitive development. The cognitive theory of second language acquisition is based on several principles. First, it claims that knowledge of language is actively constructed by the learner. It's not innate as in universal grammar theory or a habit formation in the behaviorist theory. The second principle is that knowledge of language is dynamic and constantly changing as it is subjectively shaped by learners through their experience with the real world. Accordingly, learners make their own meaning of the world through subjective experiences. Third, the human mind plays a central role in language learning, but not because it has some innate grammatical rules, as claimed by universal grammar. In cognitivism, the role of the mind is to process language, that is, to receive, analyze, understand, and evaluate language. The cognitive theory of second language acquisition asserts that language learning is part of the cognitive development of any human being. Cognitive development refers to the process by which our thinking, understanding, and learning develop and grow through different stages in our lives. Cognitive development is promoted by interaction and experimentation with the environment. Through this experimentation, we build our own understanding or meaning of the world around us. Cognitive development does not happen by chance. It requires effort, attention, and a number of mental processes that help us analyze, understand, and evaluate the world around us. Similarly, language learning is part of cognitive development, and accordingly, language learning requires effort, attention, and processing as well. Piaget observed that humans go through four main stages of cognitive development. The first stage, at infancy, babies depend on their basic five senses to understand the world around them. The second stage is from age two to age seven, where children start to use symbolic thinking and imagination as they play with toys and use role plays. At this stage, their grammar and syntax develop properly. The third stage, the concrete operational stage, lasts from age 7 to age 12, and in this stage, children develop logical thinking and concrete reasoning relevant to time, space, and quantity. It's only at the formal operational stage that humans start to understand abstract concepts and hypothetical situations. The cognitive theory promotes a constructive view towards learning. According to this view, language learning is constructed through interaction with the outside world, which allows us to construct our own subjective meanings and understanding of the world around us. Accordingly, the process of cognitive development always seeks to create a balance between what we already know and new information. Piaget calls this balance equilibration and claims that equilibration is achieved through two main processes, which are assimilation and accommodation. Assimilation is the process of adapting new information to fit our schemata. For instance, a child knows horses. When she sees a donkey, a mule, or even a cow, she calls it a horse. Thus, she adapts new information to fit what she already knows. Accommodation is when we modify our schemata or our prior knowledge to fit new information. In our previous example, accommodation happens when the mother explains that these animals are not horses. Thus, the child modifies her prior knowledge or schemata to fit 
or accommodate new information. In second language acquisition classes, assimilation and accommodation happen almost every time. For instance, a student who has just learned that the simple past of verbs is usually constructed by using ed at the end of the verb will use assimilation to construct the simple past of the verb go as goed, thus applying what the student already knows on the new information. Accommodation happens when the teacher provides feedback to the student and saying that this verb is not a regular verb, it is an irregular verb and that it has a different rule. Thus, the student will use this new information to modify their own schematic knowledge. Another theory within the framework of cognitive psychology is called connectionism. Connectionism promotes the idea that language learning happens through establishing connections between different parts of language. For instance, a learner creates a mental connection between, between he and is, I and am, drink and water, play and football eat and lunch, etc. Thus, whenever the learner is thinking about he, it is automatically related to is. So, he produces he is, which becomes an automatic connection or association. These connections or associations develop through many stages. First, learners observe regularities in language input and notice language parts that are more likely to go together, such as collocations. Then, the frequency of appearance or repetition makes these associations stronger. The more an association is repeated, the stronger the connection becomes. Learners are encouraged to try to make associations, and if these associations are erroneous and incorrect, teachers provide corrective feedback. In the end, learners end up creating a large network of associations in which every word is linked to others. To test this idea of connectionism, just think about the word health and see how many words you can associate with it. Cognitive psychology has also provided us with the processability theory for second language acquisition. Processability theory is concerned with how learners convert or transform input into intake. What we mean by intake is that small portion of input which we actually learn or we actually internalize and take in. Processability theory tries to identify the processes and stages through which learners transform the input into intake. So, how does the input become intake according to processability theory? According to processability theory, learners need to establish a relationship between the form and the meaning. This usually happens in predictable stages that cannot be skipped. The human mind contains a processing mechanism, which is totally different from the language acquisition device. And this processing mechanism is responsible for converting input into intake. And this goes through the following stages. In stage one, beginner learners are able to process only words. In the second stage, learners become able to identify the category of the word and classify them into verbs, nouns, adjectives, prepositions, as well as determine whether they are singular, plural, past, present, or future. In the third stage, learners develop the ability to understand the relationships between parts of a phrase and determine the head from the modifier within the phrase. In the fourth stage, learners understand the relationship between different phrases within a sentence. They can, for instance, differentiate between a noun phrase that represents the subject and a noun phrase that represents the object, and make a distinction between an adverbial phrase and a verb phrase and a noun phrase. In the last stage, Learners understand the relationship between main clauses and subordinate clauses in complex sentences. As a conclusion, cognitive psychology has put forward several theories that provide viable explanations to second language acquisition. However, these cognitive theories have been subject to some criticism. The three theories included in this video have been criticized for focusing too much on the role of mental processes while underestimating the role of interaction, culture, and individual differences. 
they have also been disapproved for presenting some rigid progression of the cognitive developmental stages. Connectionism has been challenged for not considering the role of learners' creativity in making associations between different parts of language. The overemphasis on frequency of occurrence is a limitation to connectionism. In this video, we have presented an overview of different theories that have been advanced by cognitive psychology in an attempt to explain second language acquisition. In the next video, we are going to talk about Krushen's monitor theory. See you then.